This screencast demonstrates a few features of a new peer-to-peer -peer data sharing application we're building at the University of Washington called OneSwarm. OneSwarm is different from currently popular peer-to-peer -peer networks in a few ways. As you can see, its user interface is completely browser-based. You can use OneSwarm as a fully functional, backwards-compatible BitTorrent client, but in this demo, we'll be focusing on one of OneSwarm's unique features, friend-to-friend -friend data sharing. Unlike existing peer-to-peer -peer networks that allow anyone to monitor user behavior, OneSwarm is designed to give users explicit control over their privacy. Since friend-to-friend -friend sharing is fundamental to the way that OneSwarm works, let's examine what it means in more detail. This image shows a group of users and the friend relationships among them. OneSwarm maintains network connections between friends' computers. To locate data, OneSwarm searches among directly connected friends, who in turn forward searches to their friends, and so on, until a data source is located. Data is forwarded along the reverse path of friend connections. Transferring data in this way protects the privacy of sender and receiver. In this example, there's only one data source, but in practice, OneSwarm obtains data from multiple data sources along multiple paths in the mesh. From the perspective of the receiver, the original data source could be anywhere in the network. All that the receiver knows is that data is being forwarded by directly connected friends. Similarly, the sender doesn't know which user is requesting data, only that a request was forwarded by friends. The ultimate destination could be anywhere in the mesh. Of course, all data sharing need not be private. OneSwarm also allows users to advertise data for sharing with friends directly. When a new user wants to share files with friends, the first step is to import some friends. Although users can add friends manually, a more convenient method is to piggyback on an existing social network like Google Talk. To import friends from Google Talk, OneSwarm speaks the GTalk protocol and, once configured, speaks to a GTalk bot running at UW. The bot maintains a list of GTalk users who also use OneSwarm and notifies users if any of their GTalk friends are also OneSwarm users. In this case, several GTalk friends are available. Friends are shown in this panel on the left. Notice that we didn't need to enter any cumbersome configuration information like IP addresses or ports. This information is maintained automatically by the peer-to-peer -peer network itself using a distributed hash table. Once connected to friends, a user can view available files of their directly connected friends by selecting the friend in the list or clicking the Show Friends Files checkbox. In addition, users can filter their local view or search for files by using the search bar. Searching the network extends beyond directly connected friends, listing results from friends, friends of friends, and so on. Once a user begins downloading a file, it's listed in their set of local swarms. OneSwarm supports streaming for audio and video files, and once a file begins downloading, users can view it directly in their browser. User data comes in lots of different flavors, and OneSwarm supports more than just native flash video. By transcoding audio and video on the fly during download, OneSwarm eliminates the need for users to search for codecs and players. Let's make this concrete by sharing some pictures in a video of a snowboarding trip that a group of UW grad students took last year. As you can see, this video works out of the box using OneSwarm's on-the-fly transcoding. We took this video directly from a digital camera. That wraps up this brief overview of OneSwarm's friend-to-friend -friend data sharing. Check out our other screencasts for more information on OneSwarm's features, and thanks for listening.